Welcome to the Geneva Motor Show 2019 in Switzerland. This is where the world's biggest car brands get together to show off all their latest shiny machines. Now, I've been here for the past couple of days now covering the show for CNET's Roadshow, and I wanted to give a bit of an insight into what goes on into covering a show like this. It's big, it's fast, it's hectic, it's non-stop, and frankly, it's exhausting. Let's take a look. The Motor Show is spread out over several massive halls, with all the different brands having their own smaller stages inside them. That means hundreds of cars dotted all over the place and thousands of people jostling to see them. For me, the formula is simple. I have a list of cars to shoot in order of priority, and it's my task to seek them out, get the shots, and get them uploaded to the website all in as short a time as possible. Trying to actually find my way around the show is one of the bigger problems. I've already gone the wrong way several times just filming this little bit. It's uh, it's a big it's a big show. There's like several huge halls and their manufacturers are dotted all over the place. So it, trying to actually find the exact car that you need is pretty difficult. It does mean that you walk absolutely miles and miles and miles getting around the show trying to get those shots. Food is scarce, water is scarce, coffee thankfully is pretty free flowing at a lot of the stands. So at least you can keep your caffeine levels nice and high. Once I've found the car I need, I'll usually try and start getting shots at the front, using the zoom on my 24-70 lens to focus in on some of the details. I'll then move around the vehicle to get shots that show it off from all angles, including interesting details like wings, headlights and alloy wheels. This is often made a lot easier if a manufacturer puts its car on a turntable. Then all you need to do is keep shooting while the car presents its angles for you. I've now shot about 20 different cars on the stand strand here, pretty tired already. Now I need to get back to the press room in order to do some editing. Of course, heading back to the press room means traversing the immense halls and dodging my way through PR and press from all corners of the globe. And yes, I'll make sure to get some more coffee on the way. My editing process is geared very much towards speed. Once my files are imported, I will typically edit a single image of a car, usually involving boosting some of the shadows and bringing down the highlights. I'll adjust the white balance, add some clarity for some extra punch, and then I can apply all of those settings to the other photographs of that car, knowing that the lighting and the colors will be mostly the same. It's still important to go through the set and tweak accordingly, just in case the lighting has changed during the shoot. And of course, each individual shot will need its own crop to show the car off at its best. But by syncing the settings like this, I can edit a set of 40 or so images of a car in only a few minutes. Once you get going, it does actually become fairly easy to get into a bit of a rhythm. You tend to start off doing these wide shots, usually from a bit of a low angle, gives the car a nice dramatic look. Then you get close in on the details. Once you get that system in place, you can kind of approach a car and rattle through the shots you need fairly quickly. The big problem is getting other photographers out of the way, because unlike a lot of the shows I cover where for example, at a phone launch, there may be five or six or 20 odd different phones around for you to photograph. There's usually only one car, and everyone thinks that their shot is the most important. Of course, no one's really more important than anyone else, but try telling that to some of the guys here. There is often quite a lot of pushing and shoving around some of the cars, and there's been a few scuffles every so often. I suppose if you're gonna come and shoot something like this, you've gotta bring your sharp elbows and your nerves of steel, or at the very least, nerves of, I don't know, Iron, iron softer than steel, gold, nerves of gold. Look good from a distance, but probably quite pliable up close. What I always really like is seeing how other photographers are shooting the cars. Like you see a lot of people coming in with tripods and I don't know if they're bracketing exposures or, or what, because I've never really found the need for a tripod. It would slow me down, I'd be setting up my shots until I can like handhold and just move around the car and shoot really quickly. That's what's really important. And there are plenty of shooters who are here using lights and strobes as well, speed lights and even bigger ones. I've seen a few pro photo packs knocking about. Again, for me, that isn't really the best way of shooting, certainly not the quickest way of shooting. If I was here 
doing one or two cars and I wanted to get the best results possible, then fine. Having some lights might make sense if you want to get the best from the car, but it's not a fast way of shooting. And for me, instead, using the natural light and then pulling back detail in post is the fastest and the easiest way for me to get the shots I need. And of course, I should absolutely go without saying that if you are photographing a show like this, you have to be in raw format. The lights overhead with different colors of the cars can throw your white balance off completely. If you're shooting in JPEG, you don't have the ability to change that with any good degree of success anyway. Obviously it depends on what you're actually doing with your photos, but you do tend to have to shoot really quickly on every car that you see. Now we want to have around 30 or 40 photos of each car in each gallery. So I need to make sure that I've got probably 40 good shots delivered. But I will shoot on each car, probably 60 or 70, knowing that some of them may not come out quite right or won't have the right angle. So I want to give myself a little bit of breathing room to cull some of those shots and only give the best ones. But unfortunately at shows like this, creativity doesn't really come into it. That is second place to speed. You have to get these shots out, you have to shoot quickly, because if you don't, someone else will beat you to it, and that's just not cool. If anything, you can try and get a bit more creative in some of your post work if there is time. Take this shot of the Bugatti Chiron on the stand at last year's show, for example. Straight out of camera, this image looks pretty bad, with poor lighting and terrible colours which the camera had been unable to capture in the raw file. But with some time spent in Photoshop, I was able to produce this. By darkening the area around the car and removing the reflections of the conference centre light on the bonnet, you could be fooled into thinking this shot was taken in a controlled studio environment. But this takes a lot of time and I almost never do that amount of post-production when I'm at a show like this. Now you can try and get as creative as you want with your shots, but there are always a handful of angles that any publication will want from you. This is the most classic shot and will often be the hero image of a car as it shows off so much of it in a single photo. Get down low for a more dramatic angle particularly if you're shooting something exotic. With even budget cars having a lot of work put into the design of the wheels, this is a shot not to miss. Plus which, they'll usually have the brand name on there somewhere, and that's always important. Air scoops, wings, cool headlights. This all adds to the car's design and all need to be captured. Hunt around for anything that makes this car stand out against the others. Often difficult to get at at auto shows as many cars can't even be opened. But when you can, get inside the cars and shoot the steering wheel, the centre console and anything else that looks important. How do you know this car is a Ferrari if you haven't got a shot of the Ferrari logo on there? Always make sure to get a good clean shot of the car's badge looking proud and shiny on that clean new paint. Other things worth bearing in mind is not to ever get too close to the cars. I did have the very awkward moment last year when I did break a million pound hypercar when I tried to close the door and um, sort of fell off. Now I still maintain that that's their fault, not mine. Like they shouldn't build a million pound car where you can knock the door off by trying to close it. They didn't really see it that way though. They weren't too pleased with me. By the end of the first day, I'd shot, edited and published over 700 photos. I am so tired, it's not even funny. I mean, it is sort of funny, but it's also quite sad. And by the end of the second day, that number had risen to over one and a half thousand. Honestly, packing light for these things really is so important. The amount of time you're on your feet, walking around, taking photos. If you've got 20 kilos of stuff on your shoulders or slung around your neck, after a day of shooting, you are gonna feel that. It is gonna be killer and your muscles will not thank you for days. I really want a hot bath. Soak it all off. 
don't like massages though, but a hot tub. A hot tub would be brilliant. Oh, and wear good shoes. Your feet will thank you. Hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight into what it's like to be a professional photographer at a show like this. If nothing else, maybe you've just enjoyed seeing some of the cars. If you like this video, do make sure to like and subscribe, and of course, leave any comments you have in the box below. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.